Hello guys, um, good, good morning. This is Joseph again from Joe Concepts. Um, once more, I want to um, thank you for being there for me in this channel. I'm really grateful. All right, yesterday I dropped a tutorial, talked about um, a two, a three part tool. I said Cinema 4D has three types of cut tool. So yesterday we looked at the normal knife tool. Today we're going to be looking at plain cut tool. The third one is loop cut, and I remember that I've already dropped one in the, um, in my in the past, so I would not be doing that tutorial. I don't want to be having a duplicate tutorial. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to give you a link to that tutorial. So once you're done with this, so you can just make that um, the tutorial you're going to watch for tomorrow. Remember, I said this is going to be a three-day tutorial, so I'm dropping this um each day consecutively so in today's tutorial i'm going to be looking at the second tool so i'm going to start with uh, a cube object and look at the tool so i'm going to break this down by clicking on this button so once i click on this this goes away and i have to be in this sub object mode so i'm going to go in any of this mode then if you right click you have the three tools you have the line cut tool, which is also called the knife tool. You have the plane cut and you have the loop or path cut. All right, so remember in the previous tutorial, I made use of R21, so it was called knife tool, but it's still the same thing as line cut tool. So today we're going to be looking at plane tool or plane cut. The shortcut is KJ or MJ, so Mary Jane. <laughs> so if I click on this um, plane cut, I have this option so so I'm not going to look at everything here because I'm still learning and I don't really make use of everything I'm just going to pick those ones that I use often and what they do and there are some that I will not talk about because if you watch yesterday's tutorial you're going to know that they have similar settings just like this mode if you remember from yesterday's tutorial you have your cut all split remove part a remove part b so i really talked about this in my previous tutorial so if you haven't gotten that you can just go back so basically for the plain code tool just working with the default setting if you just click and click it cuts this object and cuts through by default so the default setting for plain code is um not visible only setting so it cuts through the object and there is no option for you to uncheck um, for you to choose visible only so that means this cuts through the object all right so i'm going to undo so i'm going to talk more on this plain mode so if you look at the plain mode we have the free local world and camera so what we've been using so far what i used is just free so it just allows me to freely cut anywhere that I want from edge to edge and it cuts through. So that is just what this free local does. Then the other one you have here, you have your local. So what this local does is that it makes um, a cut. If I change this from free to local, then the plane will come up for me. So if I click here and go to local, then I now have the plane. So the plane will now tell me what plane I want to cut from. All right. so. If I come to this, try and open up this um, filter, um, word axis. Okay, so we have the word axis. I want the one here. Um, where is this? Mm, not a rising. Uh, no, no, not that. Not that. We just turn on everything let's see okay we don't have this so if i hit shift v i think they should be somewhere here under my view or head up display so let's see total edge nope nope let's see view Backface curling. No, 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 no. Okay, editor exists, so I'm going to turn it on. So I want it to be at my bottom left, so I'm going to just so you have this. I think that's that, so we can go back to the tutorial. Sorry about that. 
So if I come up to this, yeah, and I click my KJ, I'm back to this um, part cut. So I have my plane cut rather. So I have my local. So what local does is that it looks at this axis and cuts along this plane. This is the XZ plane. If you notice, this is the XZ plane. So that means my cut is going to be more of horizontal. So that's why you have this. And it's making this locally to this object. So look at the orientation of this object. It takes the local value. So if I go to my object mode, you notice this object has its own axis band. So it has its own axis um, line. And this is the local axis for my X and Z. So the cut is going to go through this axis. And then what that means now is, is if I come to this and rotate this guy here and go back, this becomes the exit. So if I'm to cut, it cuts it locally to this object. I hope you understand. So if I press KJ and this, this is what I have. All right. So if I click here, it cuts that axis. So if I want to cut on Y, X axis along this plane, that means I have to change this from X, Z to Y, X or X, Y. Then I have this. All right. If I want to cut this, just change to this um, Y, Z axis and that allows me to cut this object. Okay. Then let's look at the next one. The next one is um, the world. So right now the world would not change, would be very identical to the local. The reason why this is like this is because we have not changed the orientation of this object. So if I go to the object mode and rotate this object here, maybe somewhere here, just rotate somehow. And you go to your move tool, you can see everything is flipped. So this, you can already see what is happening here. So if I go to this point mode and KJ, let's start with the local. So I want to rotate about my X, um, X, Y. And if you bring your mouse up, you can see what your X, Y is it's because you can see the X, Y on this object locally. All right. So if I go to this world plane, you see how your X, Y goes. So this is your X, Y. So that means the cut is going to be slightly different from these cuts if you use your locale. So what I'm trying to say is, let's go back so you see. So once you use X, Y for locale, you see X, Y for locale, this is what we have. But if I change this to world, see what your world is giving you with the same X, Y. The reason is because it's making use of this X, Y axis. So that's the difference between the local and the world. So the world will put into consideration the world axis, the world coordinate systems and use that plane. But the local will take the orientation of your object and cut with that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to undo. Okay. And then you now have the last one, which is your camera. So what camera does is that it also makes use of the axis but now works with your camera, what your camera is saying. So right now, this is my view. So it's going to make use of my X, Y of my view. All right. So the X, Y is more like the 2D plane, the flat plane that is just presented to us in the view. So if I come to this view now, this becomes my X, Y. All right. So it's more like the flat plane. If I come here, this is my X, Y. That is just... Um, facing me or perpendicular to my screen so if that is the right word so you can just do this and cut this is to camera then if i want to change from x y i can also change to any other plane so it gives me for that plane and for the last plane based on my camera all right okay so we'll have its own use so I have that so we now have offset so i'm going to change this back to local you have offset value so what this offset value does is that notice normally the offset is zero if i click here the cut is placed exactly where i clicked 
But if I change my offset, so the offset can be a positive or a negative value. All right. So if I make it positive, so it's going to have an offset of 10 centimeter away from this object to the positive side. All right. So if I click here now. Okay. So let me undo that. So let's have an offset. Oh, by the way, let's see the scale. Okay. So that's 200. So KJ and put an offset of 30 and cut this object here okay so we don't seem to have any okay we are actually having that so if i bring this offset value to zero you see that where my mouse is is where the line is but if i change the offset value to 30 you see that my mouse is somewhere here and the line is deflected so the lower the value, the closer the line gets to my cursor. So you can already see that. So if I go to the negative side, so minus 25, for instance, it comes to the right hand side. So that's more like the offset. So if I want to create an offset on this point, I can just click it. That becomes 25 units away from there. All right? So that is what the offset does. So let's look at the next one, which is the number of points. So you can use this number of chords with this offset or so let's see so by default the number of chords is one so that's why i have one chord but if i make this um three and i click here you can already see what i'm having so now how do you know the distance between each of this line that is as um that's as a result of this spacing you have here so if i want to bring them closer I can say okay i want a spacing of two you can see what that is doing so if i bring it to let's say 10 and a spacing of five so you see the design what i get to have maybe a spacing of 20 i get to have a larger space in between so if i cut i have that all right so you see that the spacing and your number of cuts work together so i'm bringing this back to one and to ten then you have restrict to selection, select chords. Um, all these things are more in the other tutorial. So if I go to select chords, if I cut, what happens is that it selects that cutting line. So, okay. So let me uncheck this and do another cut. If I do this now, it cuts but doesn't select that edge. All right, doesn't select the edge loop, so that's what this select code does. So, if you want to cut and still select the ed edge loop so that you can do whatever you want to do on it, click it, select that edge loop, and connect cut edges, service planner three, auto snap. So, auto snap, you can also see this in the previous tutorial. So, we have regular slice. So, what regular slice does is more like it doesn't really allow you to work real time, so you can see. Once you have your select selection on the object, it just snaps. All right, so it snaps to the object. So if I get rid of this regular slice, I have this. So notice as I activate this, this is this goes off. All right, so I can increase the number of chords. So you can see the number of chords coming to play. I have three. Okay, so I can bring this back to two, use an offset value also, so it offsets away from that value. Okay, so that is what that slice does. Um, then you also have your angle constraint. So we see this angle, we saw this angular constraint in the previous tutorial, so I'm not going to talk about that. So I think I'm going to end this. Don't forget, this is, these are just quick tip tutorials on how to use the code tool. And tomorrow, like I said, I'm not going to be dropping a third one, which is supposed to be loop or path cut. And the reason is because I already have a tutorial on that, in-depth tutorial. So I'm going to put uh, a link in the description for you to go over to that. I actually use it for a project, so you can just look at how to use it. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Mind you once more, sorry. Uh, I want you to always clean your hands, stay at home and avoid contact with people and enjoy internet and keep learning 
All right. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.